So I, I could solve it for some right-hand sides when B is in the, in the plane, but most right-hand sides would be out of the plane and unreachable. So that would be a singular case. The matrix would be not invertible. There would not be a solution for every B. The answer would become no for that. Okay. Um, I don't know. So we take just a little shot at thinking about nine dimensions. Imagine that we have vectors with nine components. Well, it's going to be hard to visualize those. I, I don't pretend to do it. But somehow, pretend you do. Pretend we have, if, if this was nine equations in nine unknowns, then we would have nine columns, and each one would be a vector in nine-dimensional space, and we would be looking at their linear combinations. So we, we'd be having the linear combinations of nine vectors in nine-dimensional space, and we would be trying to find the combination that hit the correct right-hand side B. And we might also ask the question, can we always do it? Can we get every right-hand side B? And certainly it will depend on those nine columns. Some, sometimes the answer will be yes. If I picked a random matrix, it would be yes, actually. If I used MATLAB and just used the random command, picked out a nine-by-nine nine matrix, I guarantee it would be good. It would be non-singular, it would be invertible, all beautiful. But if I choose those columns so that they're not independent, so that they're there, so that the the ninth column is the same as the eighth column, then it contributes nothing new, and there would be right hand sides B that I couldn't get. Can you sort of think about nine vectors in nine dimensional space? and take their combinations. That's really the, the central thought that, that you get kind of used to in linear algebra, even though you can't really visualize it, you sort of think you can after a while. Those nine columns and all their combinations may very well fill out the whole nine-dimensional space. But if the ninth column happened to be the same as the eighth column and gave nothing new, then probably what it would fill out would be, I hesitate even to say this, it would be a, com, a sort of plane, an eight-dimensional plane inside nine-dimensional space. And it's those eight-dimensional planes inside nine-dimensional space that we have to work with eventually. For now, let's stay with the nice case where uh, the matrices work, we can get every right-hand side B, and here we see how to do it with columns. Okay, there was one step that I realized, which I realized I was saying in words that I now want to write in letters, because I'm coming back to the matrix form of the equation, so let me write it here. The matrix form of my equation, of my, of my system, is some matrix A times some vector X equals some right-hand side B. Okay. So this is a multiplication, A times X, matrix times vector. And I just want to say, how do you multiply a matrix by a vector? Okay, so I'm just going to create a, a, a matrix. Let me take 2, 5, 1, 3. And let me take a vector, x to be, say, 1 and 2. How do I multiply a matrix by a vector? And just, but just think a little bit about matrix notation and how to do that multiplication. So let me say how I multiply a matrix by a vector. Actually, there are two ways to do it. Let me tell you my favorite way. It's, a, it's, it's columns again. It's a column at a time. For me, that matrix, this 
matrix multiplication says I take one of that column and two of that column and add. So this is, in my, the way I would think of it, is one of the first column and two of the second column, and, and let's just see what we get. So in the first component, I'm getting a 2 and a 10. I'm getting a 12 there. In the second component, I'm getting a 1 and a 6. I'm getting a 7. So that, that matrix times that vector is 12, 7. Now, you could do that another way. You could do it a row at a time. You could do, and you would get this 12, and actually I pretty much did it here, this way. Two, I could take that row times my vector. This is, this is all the time, this is the idea of a dot product. This vector times this vector. Two times one plus five times two is the 12. This vector times this vector. One times one plus three times two is the seven. So I can do it by rows, and in each row, each row times my x is what I'll later call a dot product. But I also like to see it by columns. I see this as a linear combination of the columns. So here's my point. A times x is a combination of the columns of A. That's, that's uh, how I hope you'll think of A times X when we need it. Right now we've got, with small ones, we can always do it in different ways, but later think of it that way. Okay, so that's uh, um, the picture for a two by two system. And if the right hand side B happened to be 12, seven, then, of course, the correct solution would be 1, 2. OK, so let me come back next time to a systematic way using elimination to find the solution, if there is one, to any, a system of any size, and find out, because, the, because elimina if elimination fails, Find out when there isn't a solution. Okay, thanks.